Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This is a small 10 by 7 inch painting of a dimorphic jumping spider on a redbud leaf. I got photos of this guy in our backyard. Um, I frequently find these uh, dimorphic jumpers around the house. They come in two varieties. One is kind of a black and silvery white color. And the other variety is this gray colored one with the yellow pedipalps and the kind of brick red pattern on the back. And they're really neat little little creatures. They're, they're fun to watch, and uh, I get a real kick out of photographing these guys. They seem to kind of stare you down and look you right in the eyes as you uh, observe them. So I started this painting. Um, I had a sketch that I had worked up, and I transferred the main sketch over to the paper and then had frisked it off only the spider itself. And then I went about washing in um, a series of greens and yellows for the background. And you can see that I, I washed them in on dry paper. Mostly that was because I wanted to control where the lightest tones were, and I thought I'd be able to get a smooth gradient on the background, even though it was on the dry paper. So once I had the first pass in, I went about putting in a little bit of shadow in the uh, main part of the uh, the leaf and then tried to bring in the tones across the back and the red buds as they grow they tend to have a little reddish section right on the perimeter of the leaf which is uh, really pretty that's kind of hard to do in, in watercolor at times to control that uh, bleeding from a warm color to a, a cool color so that was kind of a fun thing to work on and it was uh, kind of a neat challenge so once I had the main colors on the page, I went about kind of blocking in some of the greens for the leaf and then put in some of these yellow tones across the entire background. So you can see that I have most of my colors, similar tones that I'm using, and those are in a well plate. Those are really, um, porcelain well plates are really good for mixing colors and you can read what it's gonna look like on the page quite well with those. So I was basically putting these in with a number six round brush, and then when I'd have a, one of the main layers done, I'd hit it with the hair dryer and then bring in another layer. And my main goal was is to cover as much of the page as possible and start building some depth as quickly as possible. And I, I wanted to have a shift of focus as it went through the page where by the spider itself, it was going to have more detail and then kind of fade off as we move into the back of the background to the kind of yellowy colors where the stem is, and then also fade with detail as it went down the page. Um, kind of mimicking what was happening in the photographs that I took, that you'd have uh, kind of these different tiers of focus as you went through the, the photograph. So the front leaf would be in focus, and then there's the shadow, and then the spider plus still some focus and then it kind of starts fading off as we go back with detail. And I'd switch brushes right here. I started using a, a number two round because I was trying to do some of the uh, smaller venation on the leaves and uh, that dictated using a smaller brush. And I kind of was just scumbling in a little pattern to give it a little bit of texture as I went through. Uh, if you just did all these super flat, it would... Uh, it wouldn't read as textured as the leaf actually is. When you see it in in that macro view, you can kind of see the pebbly texture that takes over the leaf. So by doing some of that motion with the brush as you put it in, in many layers, it starts building that feeling for um, texture and depth. And again, you can see I'm keeping my tones darker toward the top, and I'm losing contrast as well as detail as I go to the bottom. And you can see that this was many, many passes. As I started getting more detailed work um, through it, I stopped using the well plate and started mixing the colors on the uh, larger butcher's tray. And 
And so this process of glazing in these colors in many layers, um, it takes a long time, but it gives you a, uh, a texture and a feeling that you can't quite get if you're doing it um, quickly with fewer passes. You can also see that at this point I was starting to bring some of those red tones in from the edge of the leaf and then in through the little veins going on to the main part of the leaf itself and then letting those fade as I went in. And then also carrying in this smaller subvenation where it starts going from the main part of the leaf into the uh, little almost cell-like uh, divisions of each of the uh, little lumps on the leaf. So it took a long time to do these. Um, it's something that I think you only get that look if you sweat the details and go through and do it. Um, it's not necessarily fun to do. It's kind of one of those things where you kind of know what your overall pattern is going to be and turn your brain off and get it all done evenly. And, um, and it, it has a satisfaction in having it all done. <laughs> Because it's the, the sort of thing that you only, I wouldn't say that you don't enjoy doing it, um, but when you see it done and completed, you can really enjoy the look because it, uh, you realize not that how much work went into it, but there's a satisfaction with getting that texture on the page and having it work and have a cohesive look to it. Once I was done with the main parts of the leaf, I peeled off the frisket from the spider and then transferred the rest of the uh, sketch over using tracing paper and a folding bone. My folding bone right here is an old antler that I found in the woods, if you're wondering what's the deal with that. So I went about just color, putting in the lightest local colors of my the subject, my spider. And my goal was to get as much of that paper covered so I would only keep the white where I really need it to uh, have those real highlights on the spider. Other than that, I wanted to get the basic colors in so I could start establishing the overall painting and have it look more cohesive as soon as I can. And one of the things I noted was that, you know, I, in my photograph, it, it had a certain, I don't want to say flatness, but it, it sort of did that with the photograph, the flatness worked. But when you were going to the painting, I was going to have to amp up some of my contrast a little bit more. So I needed to put a little extra shadow on the leaf in front and a little extra shadow underneath the spider. It's kind of strange because when you do macro photography, you spend a lot of time trying to eliminate shadows um, because it ends up looking better generally. You have smooth shadows and um, nicely diffused shadows. And sometimes when you go to a painting, that lack of shadow can work against you that you don't necessarily have it because the painting's an interpretation sometimes you need to boost some of those shadows to have it read a little bit more accurately were mostly done with a number two brush, a sharp one. Um, just those hold a lot of pigment, but if you have a, a fairly new number two brush, they, they hold the pigment, but they still are sharp enough that you can get your little hairy details of these uh, spiders. So the majority of this was a sharp number two. Um, for some of the little hairs on the legs, I switched to a crow quill pen. And rather than using ink, I mix watercolor and then put it on the crow quill with a brush so I can control exactly where those little hairs go. And it's done fairly opaquely. I do it very late in the painting because you need to, if you were to go over these with wet, they would be too much. Uh, they, would, they would want to bleed. And occasionally I'll go over it with a paintbrush if it got too dark and I'll just uh, wet it quickly and then just dab it with a piece of paper towel um, to pull that tone back a little. 
So there you go. This is a uh, 7 by 10 inch transparent watercolor of a dimorphic jumping spider. Thanks for watching. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.